guys, I'm Ash and I make skateboards here in London. Today I'm at Matty's workshop from Big Eye Skateboards to show you how to make a skateboard the way that I do it. Step one, getting our wood veneers together. These thin sheets are called wood veneer and are about 1.5 millimeters thick. These wooden layers have the grain going in different directions and need to be placed in a certain order to create the perfect strength. When the grain goes lengthways, it bends along the length, which is good for getting the concave on the board, whereas the other ones have the grain going across the width, creating a nice elasticity for the nose and tail to be made. On top, bottom and middle, we'll have the stronger lengthways ones, and then for evenness, we'll have the width grains in between them. Step 2. Glue. We need to spread a good strong wood glue evenly on each side of the veneer so that we can hold the board together well and won't get any air gaps or lumps of glue in the middle. The best tool for spreading the glue uniformly is a paint roller. Step 3. Moulding the board. As the glue dries it will harden and curve the board to the shape of the mould used. The best way to get even and strong pressure across the board is a hydraulic press, like this one. It's powered by a foot pump to get the exact pressure needed. We must leave the board in the mould for 24 hours for the glue to dry. And then, once we take it out, we have to leave it for 5 days to cure. Step 4. Cutting our shape out. Once the board is cured, it's ready to be cut out and custom shaped. Measuring and accuracy is really important so that our final product is symmetrical and even. Today we'll be using a handheld jigsaw, so we need to make sure our board is clamped in properly before cutting. We are just making a basic cut, so we'll stay outside our pencil line so we can trim it down afterwards. Step 5. Trimming the edges. To trim the edges of the board, I like to use electric sanding machines. By moving the board against this in a rotating motion, we can trim the ends to a nice curve. Step 6. Sanding for a smooth curve. We now need to move onto a lighter handheld sander for shaping the sides. We'll use a variety of strengths. The stronger ones will take more wood off and give it a hard shape. Then the lighter ones will lightly sand and smoothen the curve of the sides. It's a long and tiring process, but it's also really rewarding. At the end of this process, we will have gone from flat wooden block edges to smooth rounded edges all around the board. Step seven, drilling truck holes. Here we have a ruler for drilling the truck holes. You can find the center line of the board through these diamond shapes, which will help us to make sure the holes are in line with each other and centered accurately in the middle of the board. Today we'll be using a handheld drill, so we must be very careful to align the drill accurately. We will finish the holes off using a countersink tool, which allows the bolts to sit flat on top of the board. Step 8. Varnishing. Varnishing will make the board darker, shinier and more protected against the weather. We just need a thin, even layer like we did with the glue before, so a foam roller is perfect. Once it's dry we can lightly sand off any excess for an even smoother finish. Step 9. Graphics. I like to use a laser to transfer my designs to the board. Watching it burn away the wood is so cool. Today we'll just be doing my logo to the top side of the deck while we think of a cool design to go underneath. Thank you for watching How to Make Skateboards with Ash. I'd like to take some time to thank Matty from Big Eye Skateboards for trusting me with his workshop to make this video. And a shout out to Rachel Sherlock from Keep Rolling Company who's been filming me this whole time. I hope this video has been informative and fun to watch. And if you have any questions about my board making process, feel free to direct message me on Instagram at Ashskates.
Till next time, bye!